So basically, um, we will use images that are available for reuse, right? So today's virtual, um, you know, lesson and workshop is going to be on creating a virtual classroom in Google Slides. So I'm going to show you various um, ways on doing it, and own or um, go on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I'll show you. Um, there are many virtual classrooms that are already set up for you for free, and then you can add and edit um, as you like, right? So I'll take you th to the process of how to create your own from scratch, and then how to get one that's kind of already created for you, and then you can just add and modify to your liking, okay? So um, everything is being recorded. Um, the slides will be up on Google Classroom for you to come back and reference at any time. This um, workshop will be recorded for you to, to see again if you need to. And again, you can always ask me um, questions at, you know, about something. So what you are need to create your virtual classroom, right? You are basically a blank Google slide and the Bitmoji Chrome extension. So um, those of us that don't have the Bitmoji Chrome extension on our work laptops can sign in to um, our work email from our personal laptops and get the Bitmoji extension um, on your home computer. So if you log into your work email from home, your home computer, you have the actual slides that you create or your classroom uh, for your students in your drive from your computer. So then you can always access. Remember, the good thing about Google is that you can access it from anywhere. Even if you create it in your personal uh, email account, you can just hit the share button and then you will share it to your work email. So that's another option in the meantime of us not being able to all add the Bitmoji Chrome extension. Now, in order for you to actually have the Bitmoji, you need to download the app and create your Bitmoji on the app. It, it doesn't allow you to create your Bitmoji on the computer or on the Chrome extension. So um, once you download the app, you create your Bitmoji, you can change the clothing um, and do all of that stuff, your outfits. Uh, it's totally up to you. I mean, have fun with it. And then you can uh, don't have to have a Snapchat account to have a Bitmoji. You can just, um, when you download the app and sign up, what you would do is you want to say, click the option that says sign up with your email. So whenever you guys do that, if you have some difficulty with creating it or um, run into trouble, just you know, send me a message and I'll try to walk you through it. But basically, um, you have to do it from an app uh, on your phone. And then once you do that, have the Chrome extension, then you're able to do all the other stuff. So the first thing uh, that you would need to do um, would be to open up a new um, Google blank slide. So this is if you want to create your very own Bitmoji classroom from scratch. You don't want to use anybody's work. So this is how you would, the steps you would need to follow. So for um, Yolanda, the Google Classroom header, like you had asked me, um, in order yeah, for you yeah. to do the header, so this is where you need to like, this is the option. The only thing that you would have to change would be when you go to the file page, the page setup, right? You would change the dimensions of the page to 1000 by 250 pixels. And that, okay. would, and that would allow you, and I'll show you that at the end of my presentation. And that's going okay. to allow you to change and create your Google Classroom header. And I noticed they have they have the header, but then when in the header, they have that little round, um, another little round um, uh, circle embedded in the header. So it's like you have a header, just like you have the header on mm -hmm. the digital classroom, then you have embedded your picture. Yes. In there. Okay, so I guess you'll show you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the only thing that I wanna warn you about it is that when you upload your header to the Google Classroom, 
you're going to get that frustrating dark overlay over your image. And unfortunately, it's an accessibility thing uh, with Google Classroom and it cannot be changed. So my recommend, uh, recommendation to you is that if you are creating your own um, header for your Google Classroom, is that you try to use images that are very bright. Because if you, uh, sometimes if you use very light images because of that dark overlay, things will not look as bright. Uh, so that's just my recommendation to you if you want to create your own uh, Google Classroom header. Okay, so the next thing you would need to do would be to collect your images. Now, this is if you are going to create your own theme for your, uh, your virtual classroom. Uh, I have linked uh, some, a page where you can get some inspirational posters. Now, um, I would reach out to this person um, to get permission to use their digital, um, you know, their posters from their website, be just because, you know, of privacy issues and getting permission, if you choose to use that particular website. Um, the other thing you can do is just use um, regular images from Google, Google that are made for reuse, right? And I'll show you how to do that. So when you are um, searching for any images, um, whether it's in your Google Slides right, or whether you go on Google and search for images, always remember yesterday I even spoke about finding images that are transparent for you know uh, your background. So for example, if you're looking for a couch for your Google, um, you know your classroom, your virtual classroom, I would search couch transparent background so that there isn't any background in the image. So I'm gonna go through the steps after. I just wanted to tell you what to do first. So but you had also you had also mentioned, I remember the images, you also say that you put um, user like uh, user. So that way you'll be so what is the difference between that and when you're looking at it, you're you're doing an image like yesterday. We did the image, right? Transparent image, and then you had we could reuse it. Versus mm -hmm. if we went to Bidmoji, we wanted to use that inspirational and put on their reuse. Is it because in a sense, isn't we're, is in a sense isn't that we're giving that person um, acknowledgement? Right. So well, what's the difference? So when you use your Bitmoji, it's your Bitmoji. You don't have to ask permission. But if you're um, getting images off of, I mean, as long as we're not selling it, you know, our stuff, I think it's okay to, it should be okay for us to use um, images. But if you don't want to get into trouble of, you know, asking for permission to use somebody's uh, images when you do Google, I would, um, I'll show you how to change it where it says, um, you, where you can reuse images. So, so those are images that are, you are allowed to use uh, or reuse in any of the products that you create. Thank you, thank you. No problem. So um, here's a tip that I have for uh, your Bitmoji classroom. So imagine that you want some different poses for your, uh, slides or whatever it is that you're creating. So when you're looking for standing bitmojis with no additional text or art, um, you would just type in the word pose and it gives you all these different poses that you can find in your bitmoji without the words. Because if I'm going to show you, so if when I click my bitmoji here, right, it has a ton of, of myself with words in here, right? So sometimes if you're looking for your Bitmoji without any words, you hit pose and it will give you all of your Bitmojis without any word, you know, without words. And then it'll give you some with words. So in different positions, you can add to your um, virtual classroom or to your slides um, without having any words in it. So that's my uh, tip if you want to add your Bitmoji with no words. So here is where um, we come into um, the tips for searching for um, images, right? That we are 
able to reuse without asking for permission. So to help you uh, search for images, there is an actual filter uh, tool that you need to know about when you go to Google. So basically when you are in Google, uh, I actually have the picture here and you're on images. So I put couch and I want images of couches. What I need to do is click on tools and then where it says um, color, I wanna change that to transparent because I want to make sure that I have a transparent background in my image. And then when, where it says usage rights, I need to click on where it says labeled for reuse. So when you choose that option of label for reuse, you don't need to ask permission from anyone to use those images. So, I mean, like if we're not going to sell any of the products that we are creating, the problem that people have with you using their images without permission is because some people try to use their images without permission and then are selling um, their product with images that belong to other people and that's where you run into um, issues. But if you don't plan on um, selling any of the things that you create, um, then you're not gonna get in trouble because you're not really selling or you know your, that product with other people's work. So if you wanna avoid um, you know, that issue, then I would just pick images that are always labeled for reuse and then you won't run into that problem. Does that make sense? Good, okay. So that's just a tip if you wanna search outside um, of your Google um, slides and you go into Google and find specific images that you like. Um, how do you create a scene in, if this is as if you were going to, you know, do this from scratch, you really want to be adventurous and really create your own virtual classroom. So once you have, you know, your images and your background, you have everything that you really want to add to your class, um, you know, then you're ready to go, right? You can also search for wall and floor backgrounds in the Google Slides when you search. So I'll show you that as well. Uh, but they actually have, um, if you look up wall and floor background, they will come up with the various um, images that you can add to your uh, virtual classroom. And here are some uh, editing tips. So when resizing your images, make sure uh, you are resizing from the corner point of the selected image. So this will maintain the height and width of the resize, uh, with proportion, proportions with, uh, of the resized image. Like if you try to resize from the top or the side points, the dimensions will not adjust properly. So my recommendation to you is that whenever you add anything to your Google slide, that you are um, shrinking it from the corners so that it really doesn't leave it looking disproportionate. And then to layer the image um, below another, you just right click, and I've showed you this before where you click the, um, you know, if you have an image, you would just click on, I don't have an image here, but let me go back here. So if I have, I click on the image and then I click on insert, why? Format, why doesn't it allow me to adjust the image? It's not letting me do it. Okay, I have to right click the image. So you click on the image, right click, then you have order, and then you have options of how you want to send the picture, whether it's to the front, the back. So you have to right click the image in order to change the image order. And then um, you can also, you would follow the same thing um, if you were doing this on PowerPoint. So if you feel more comfortable um, creating your Bitmoji uh, virtual classroom in PowerPoint, you can do that as well. So how to share your uh, virtual classroom. So once your digital classroom is created um, and you're satisfied with the work, you now have to share it with your students. So um, 
some people that I have looked into, they uh, suggest actually downloading the PDF of your um, virtual classroom. And then this will not allow the students to make any changes to your virtual classroom. So when you actually post it to your Google Classroom, it's a PDF um, and not actual um, Google slide. And then the students can't move it around. However, they can still click on any of the objects that you have or links, um, and they'll still be able to do that, right? So if I was to create the PDF, I would go um, to here, file, and then I would click download and then click on a PDF document. And then for me to upload it into my Google Classroom, I would um, then go to Google Classroom, I would click on the assignment, I would add file and then upload my file. And then I'll show you um, how to do that as well. So basically here is a virtual classroom that um, one of my uh, coworkers has created for her summer school that she shared with me. Um, so basically she got this uh, template off of Teachers Pay Teachers for free. And then she just customized it to um, her desire, right? She added her Bitmoji. She uh, also added the different links here that she is using during summer school, right? Um, and then basically anything that the children click on, they would um, be able to take them somewhere else, right? So let me show you my Google Classroom, uh, my virtual classroom that I created for myself. And I um, actually just got the template off of Teachers Pay Teachers, right? Because I'm like, uh, it's so much easier to have a template already there. And I was like, I think I paid a dollar for this. There's a ton of free, um, you know, classrooms already set up, but I was like, for a dollar, why not? Um, I'm, it's not gonna break the bank. So basically what I did is I added certain things on here that I wanted the students to be able to access, right? So in order, I got the picture of Epic cause I was using Epic. So when I click on here, um, in order to hyperlink something, right? So I showed this kind of yesterday as well. So I have to first go to the website that I want the students um, to hyperlink it to. Sorry, wrong website. Okay. Of course. No, I don't want to have the Chrome extension. All right, so I'm on the website that I want the students uh, to get. So I basically highlight to my virtual classroom. All right. This thing always comes down. So I'm back here at my virtual classroom. And then when I click on the picture of the book, I just click here, the, the link, insert the link, right? I paste it here and then I click apply. And now whenever the students click here, right? If they click the book, they click the link and it automatically takes them to where it is that I want them to go. And you would do that for anything that you want the students um, to be able to link on. So like right here, I have an image of a calendar, right? And they uh, click, if they click on here, it's gonna take them to our school calendar, right? So the only thing that I would need um, to do is locate where it is that I have. So I saved the calendar to my Google Drive and all I did was copy the link. And I, um, whenever I copied it, I just clicked the little link here and then it automatically takes, 
you know, adds it there. So I have, you know, the, a picture of the school. I have, um, you know, myself here. I have Nozella. I also linked it. So if I want students to go to their Nozella account, they can just click here and it takes them to Nozella. Okay, this was when I also did Boom Learning. I just click the Boom Learning and it takes them there, right? So it's totally um, up to you uh, how you wanna, you know, do it, right? Here is Brain Pop. Whenever I had Brain Pop, if I want them to go on Brain Pop, they click there and it takes them right to the page. So basically, in order for you to really um, get, you know, the page linked, you have to go to the page, you have to highlight and copy it, right? Following the permission that her agent parent um, you know, copy the page. So I would do a control C, right? And then you would um, actually then go back to your virtual classroom. Okay. Um, and then you would just hyperlink it. Now I have a question for you. With, sure. Is this, um, is this on your, when they click on to your stream, do they see this on your top banner? Is that what they're seeing on the top banner? This top. Is that I'm what they're seeing? You. I'm sorry. But I, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in order to link it onto my Google Classroom. Okay. Yeah, I was just confused that it, when you I need clicked to on it, to the, right? right? Okay. All right. I have a question too. So sure. the F the the little icons epic blank brain pop mm -hmm. and you put those in you're going to show us how to do that right those little I put those in so thumbnail. yeah so i put those in i'm going to show you i just wanted to look like and then i'm going to walk you through uh, putting one together so i just wanted to show you what it looked like what i have already created myself so i went on teachers pay teachers and i um got this already background that was already there and i added certain images to you know my virtual classroom i had more links if i wanted to um on here i want to show you a, another one that um i actually created with um my um cooperating for um you know the distance learning so we created this classroom together Right. So because we collaborated on um, the document, she was able to add her Bitmoji to um, the slides. Right. So if you work with other teachers and um, you this uh, virtual classroom, you have the option of doing that as long as you both uh, share the, the document. Right. So Anytime the students clicked on a link, it would take them to, you know, the Google Classroom. So we had links on here. It was very, um, we had different things on here for the students to see. Like they also came here. We started working on it um, and then never really finished it. But um, on here, there was actually certain books that I think, yeah. So there's actually some books that the students send to. So we just added the audio on uh, there so that if the students came to um, this actual part of our uh, virtual classroom, they can sit and listen to um, books. So that's, you know, another way of being able to cooperate with other teachers that you work. So that's another option. Okay. Um, so let me show you what it looks like uh, if I was to create one. So I have actually gone on Teachers Pay Teachers, and there is a ton of free um, virtual classrooms that you can actually get, right? So, so the, for those two backgrounds, I know you want you paid for a dollar, and the other one with the co-teacher was that something you got off of paid teachers as well? The second yeah, one. For, 
that one was free. Okay, thank you. So no problem. Um, so you search for your bit mode. So sometimes it's just easier to find a template that's already there for you and go from there, right? Because then you don't have to worry about um, paying for certain products or worrying about copying certain images without getting permission. So look at all the ones that are free. You have one for kindergarten. Um, I mean, there's a ton. So this is the one that she used also. See, it was free. It even already has a Google Classroom on there. All you have to do would be then to add um, the links. You even have, you know, stuff here where you can get um, accessories for free. These are all free stuff. If you're a music teacher, you can create, um, there's a music room for you. So there's so many, like without you having to go crazy um, to really start your uh, virtual classroom from scratch. So you have a ton. There's like two pages worth of something. So I usually, you know, like to just pick one that is already created and go from there. So I, I'll pick this one. So once you um, pick the one that you want, you would click download right to download it and then i'm going to open the file are you guys able to see it yes i i can see it okay yes, yes. so i'm going to put it into my documents and then i want to open up a new um, page so that okay. I'm going to open up a new I'm going to open up a new page for Google Slides so I'll share my screen again Are you planning to use that Bitmoji that's already in the um, template? Um, no, I'm going to use mine. My, my, I would use my Bitmoji. Slide. Okay, and then I'm going to um, open. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to select the file. My documents. Okay, virtual. Let me just. Okay, it's going to upload it. Okay. And I don't understand why it's not opening with. That one was a PDF and not a Google yeah. slide or PowerPoint. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't. That's weird. I don't know why they did that. I'll look for another one. Maybe you have to um, do PDF to image. You know oh, I, mean? I know, but I didn't want to use that. Um, I know what you're, I, I think I know what you're trying to say. Like, so choose it as an image, right? Okay. Is that what you're saying? You have to convert it though. You have to convert yeah. the PDF to um, JPEG or ping. Yeah. Let me do that. But I, I'd rather just pick one that I don't, you don't have to go through all that trouble. Okay. Uh, so let me pick one that is that does not have PDF. So let's see. Um, this maybe this one is editable. Let me pick this one here. Let's see if this one is a slide. See, I think 
This is not a slide either. It's a PDF. Is it? That one was a PowerPoint, so it should convert to a slide. Yeah, it is a PowerPoint. Sorry, the internet is very slow. <laughs> so um, I'm going to enable editing. I'm going to save it and then I'll open it up in Google Slides. File, open, upload. So here we go. Can everybody see that? So I'm I'm going to get rid of this person because I don't want her there. Uh, so that I can add my own Bitmoji. So if there's certain things on here that you don't like, um, you can always you know take out. So here she has. Um, I can take that out if I wanted to. Um, if I want to, and then I can write my own things. So let's say uh, you wanted to find, ouch, right? So I'm going to insert image, search the web, and I'm gonna put count. You're gonna, it's gonna come up, look for the couch that you would like for your classroom. Maybe it's this one here. If you wanna add it. So I would insert the couch. You see how it doesn't have a background? So here I'm resizing. As you, I said before, like you're going to resize from the corner. And then I might want to make it bigger. Okay. Like this. And then if I'm going to add my Bitmoji, I would click the Bitmoji and I want to sit there. I would copy image. I'm going to paste here. If I want to sit on my couch, I can stand. Okay. Like if there's certain sign, I can remove it. Right. We're not a, if I'm not a science teacher, I want to add um, other website like what's a website that you guys would like to link on there so that i can show it is there anyone in particular that you would like to see like the up like Raz kids okay Raz kids all right so let me do this i hate like whenever i toggle over something the thing comes down and it doesn't let me go anywhere okay Raz kids Okay. And I want to get the image. So let's say uh, you want this image, right? So I would click tools and make sure I click transparent. All right. And then if you want to be specific to make sure that um, you're not using anything inappropriate, you can do labeled for reuse, right? And I can get the icon. Try to look for the icon and it doesn't come up. So sometimes it doesn't let you use some of those. So I'm just going to have to copy it. 
um, because when you put labeled for reuse, a lot of these won't come up. Be but because I'm not selling it, I think we'll be okay. All right. And then what I can do, because it has, I'm gonna crop the image so I can get rid of that white background. Okay, and then crop it, okay. And then I need to make sure that I go back and click the link. Okay. This is where they go, right? So I'm going to do control C to copy it. When I click, I have, if I'm not on the image, I gotta click the image. I have to click the link, insert the link here, control V and then click apply. And then whenever the kids go here, automatically take them to RAS Kids. Okay. So that's another option there. You, if you want to put yourself here, okay, you would just right click and then rotate yourself horizontally and you can sit here instead. Okay, so um, maybe there's um, a plant that you want to add or a little, I don't know, what else would you like to add to your classroom? Maybe a little table. Mm -hmm. um, so you would have to, again, go into insert image. Maybe a desk. Um, okay, do a transparent background. And then let's see, maybe you want this one. Like you would have to like kind of play with your images, right? And what you want to add. So this classroom is very plain, but if you you know, if that's the one that you like, or you can actually search for ones that are more intricate, right? That have more detail. So that's how you would add images, right? To your actual um, virtual classroom. Now, if you wanna create one from scratch, right? So you would have to go to a blank page. You need to delete all of this. Once it comes up. And then get rid of themes. Okay. And then you're going to insert image from web. And then you will do wall and floor background. Okay. And then you can pick this one. Let's see. And then you would just resize the image to fit the actual, or what you can also do is if you don't want it to move, is set it as your background. So what you can do is file, um, you can save the image onto your um, actual computer and then upload it as a background. Okay, so that do that. Okay. And this is how you would add a floor and wall background. And then let's say you want to add a whiteboard. You again insert image from web, whiteboard, transparent background. Okay. And then look for the one, maybe you like this one, insert. And obviously it's huge, so you've got to resize the image and place it where you would like. If you want, then add um, your Bitmoji and you're standing up, add this one, just adding. And then you would click um, 
paste. And I would put myself here in the classroom. I can resize and add more things and play around with it like that. So the point is for you to just like really play around with um, the actual page and really see what it is that you want to add to your classroom. You know, again, like you can always come back here and look for ones that are already created for you. Sometimes some like really inexpensive. Like I said, the one that I created for my classroom was um, a dollar. So, you know, it's really wasn't that. But like this one here is free and um, it actually goes directly to your Google Drive. So I would just click add to my. Because this one was done with uh, Google. So then I sign in clicking my Google name. It's going to make me a copy of it. Okay, and then I'm going to. It's here, right? So, and then I just delete anything that I don't want. I can change all of this. I can change, I can delete this person and put myself there. Sit down. And then I would put myself here in the chair. To resize yourself to fit like that. All right. Uh, but here, like, as you see, this is for class dojo. Um, and then you basically can hyperlink. Basically, if I hyperlink class here, I would go on class dojo, right? Like here. And then um, if you are logged in, log in, but I would click, I would just click the link here. Now that's class dojo. Would you do that for remind.com for remind? You can do that for remind as well. So okay. I would just, click, so I would just click the image here. I would do hyperlink, control V to paste it and apply and that will hyperlink class dojo here. And then I could do the rest for everything else as well. So here this, um, you know, these slides you would just delete, right? Um, here, this teacher like hyperlinked like a quiz that she had on Epic. So you can write anything that you want here uh, and then hyperlink it. So let's say you had a puzzle uh, that you wanted the students to do, then you would hyperlink it there. Okay. Does everyone understand as far as this part goes? And I can change anything on here as well. I have a question. This sure. um, digital classroom, is basically mm -hmm. an overview of your, I, I see of your, you know, different subjects of, of what you're going to do. Cause like, for example, you know, but I'm wondering, um, would it be tedious to do that with other subjects as well? In other words, let's say you had math, welcome to math and you have that on there, or basically what you did was just a generalization, right? Where you mm -hmm. had your overview of the classroom and then right. with your co-teacher, you did it with what one sub ASL subject, correct? So it's just as two types of digital classrooms that you had. With uh, the other teacher, yeah. we did it as she was the ELA teacher and I was the ESL teacher. So um, we were doing like different things that the students could go on to complete either ESL or um, you know 
the ELA assignments. Uh -huh. So it's totally um, up to you whether it's- Have you seen it though? Have you seen it per subject or you just basically see the use of this more of digital, like overview digital, where you get an overview and you put all the little the links and then co-teachership. That's it basically. Or have you ever seen it where someone's uh, have done this like per subject? That that was kind of like my question. I, I've only seen it as a, a one subject type thing. So like the teachers that I have seen uh, do it is like, for example, uh, my son's uh, art teacher, she did it where she created her um, art digital uh, classroom and she posted, she had like a whiteboard um, and then K to two where the students would click on there and it would take them to their assignment. And then um, the three and fourth, third and fourth grade would have their assignment where they would click and take them to their assignment. So it's either something, mm -hmm. if you're gonna use the virtual classroom daily, then just be mindful that it needs to be changed daily. Right. You're just okay. going to use it as like, go to the digital classroom to click the link to a specific thing, then you just, then you wouldn't have to change it daily. You would set it up and the students would go there just as a resource base. I see. So that's what, so now, um, I'll wait till you finish because I just wanted to know how you were gonna uh, post that. And I think you're still, you're still not done yet. So I'll wait until you're done. Okay. So um, I don't know if you guys want me to show this one posted onto my Google uh, Classroom or the one I created myself, uh, but I mean, either or. So basically it all depends on, you have to be mindful of how much uh, time you wanna spend on your virtual, um, classroom, right? A lot of the times I know a lot of teachers at Oliver created their virtual classroom where, especially for the lower grades, where the students would go there um, just to click on books to listen to, right? The teacher, um, I went over where to record, what applications to use to record. Um, so you can use that um, and you would record yourself reading the book and then you would post, you know, actually put an image of the book on there. Um, and then you would link your actual voice. I have never done that yet because I work with the older kids and I don't think they wanted to listen to me read anything. <laughs> um, but again, it was something so very new um, and the kids were feeling overwhelmed um, to really like get all these virtual stuff, you know, things that they needed to. Uh, really master themselves being outside of the classroom. And we were going to introduce it to the students, but then we felt that they might be overwhelmed with all this information all at once. So we felt that we wanted to hold it off for um, September and you know start fresh and really introducing it little by little. Because um, that's what I was thinking when I was looking at this. You know, my mind is turning as far as Yes, do an overview. And then if I do another one where it's just one with small groups, that way they click on it and they see where they're, they're in the small groups. And I like what you had mentioned. They can see the books in front of them. They could click the image on and actually look at the book. But I think it comes back to our time. That's another thing that concerns me is the biggest issue is time, you know, and then, you know, where it stands. So that that's why I was just trying to say, gee, should I just do this as an overview? Then should I work at this and do a small group and have a little other slide with a small group on it? Or no, just do two or three in center. So I'm thinking in my mind digitally, that way the kids could have access. Because remember, we're, we're not in the classroom. We're trying to give them access. So that's the reason why I'm bringing some of those things up. Right. So it, you can even use it as like, you want the kids to, you've done a lesson, now you want them to go into small groups um, and say like, like these five uh, students, I want you to go on Epic and pick the book that I assigned to you. Um, these five students, I want you to go on um, Clever or Nuzella and read this assignment that I've assigned to you. 
That's so where you I'm coming understand. from. Yes, that's exactly where I'm coming from. That so to understand that you can use it that way too. And let's say uh, there's a worksheet that you have um, on there as well. You know, you can say click on the link that I have in our you know virtual classroom to complete today's assignment. You can do it like that as well. Those are all possible ideas. Like, you know, nothing is really set in stone. I mean. It could, something can work and or something might not work and then it's okay if it doesn't work we you know the important thing is that we learn from whatever it is that doesn't work and it's okay like showing the children that we make mistakes or that something doesn't work kind of gives them the confidence that it's okay for them to make the mistake and adjust so um i think we're gonna have to do be flexible with adjusting a lot of the things that are are going to happen along the way to be honest with you uh, because i think september is you know i don't know what september is going to look like i wish i knew like especially i'm a planner right i don't know those of you that are planners makes it a lot more difficult because it's like we like to plan and it's so hard to plan because there's so much unknown and I feel like the fact that we, if we get that mentality that we're gonna need to be able to adjust and be flexible with certain things, I think it will make our life a little bit easier. Um, well, Sylvia, I do have to say, I thank God for your classes. I really do, because I could honestly say as a teacher, I can honestly say as a teacher, no matter what happens in September, I'm so happy that I could you know, access some of these things and now have choices. So these classes empowered me to a sense where now I could feel I could creatively think about digitally and thinking in that digital mode. So um, I thank God for your classes. And and no matter what, at least I feel much better uh, that whatever happens, that at least I could turn around and say, gee, I have great ideas on what I can do for them to interact. So uh, again, I, I'm a planner and I, I'm grateful for your help. Yeah, no problem. So uh, Gustavo asked if um, if he could link. Do you see the one that has green Sorry. on the clock? I think we, if, all right, I think they muted themselves. Um, so Gustavo asked if we can um, actually um, add our teacher email um to our bitmoji i haven't tried but i'm willing to try it with you uh so let's see if i was to add a link and i put my email and i apply they should they would be able to email me you see that no nope. sweet right so <laughs> Um, Gustavo, I hope that answers your um, answer, Gustavo, your question, Gustavo. So what I basically did is I clicked on my Bitmoji, I clicked on the insert link, and I added um, my uh, actual email on here, and then clicked apply. And if the you know uh, parents or anyone wants to email me, they can click you know my picture and email me there. So, uh, I mean, let's say, you know, instead of having like a microscope, this goes to, you know, mystery science, but let's say you have a, a Google voice number that you might want to add. Um, I can delete certain things from this picture. Let's say I want to get rid of this. Well, this goes to YouTube, but let's say I wanted to get rid of this, right? And I want to add a phone so um i would insert an image from the web and a phone transparent background and let me see if i find oh, maybe this one it's old school why not Okay, it's a huge phone, but I'm gonna make it super tiny and I might have to move myself, right? And when I put myself back, I'm gonna hyper, I don't want, I want to hyper 
So let's say, I don't even know what, I do have one, but I don't know what it is. Uh, okay. And then I apply, uh, I don't know if it's gonna let me do it, but. Well, it won't let me do it. I wish it would. I wanted to be able to add a number. I gotta look that up to see if I can add it. But it would be nice to be able to link um, our, you know, a phone number if we wanted to. I'm gonna see if I can figure it out. Uh, but you can actually link any of these images to anything. So if I click here, it's gonna take you to the Google Docs. If I click here, it'll take me to books. So you can hyperlink anything that you have in your virtual classroom. You, right? So once I'm satisfied with my virtual classroom, then I would just do file and then I would do download as a PDF so that I can upload it into my um, Google Classroom. Okay. So I'm to make sure I, it's saved. Yeah. Can you say it again, please? Yeah, I'm going to say it again. So I saved it as a PDF, right? So that the students can't uh, manipulate anything. So I'm going to open up my Google Classroom. Okay. I'm going to go to Classwork. I'm going to create an assignment. And I'm going to, I always have to title whatever I add to my Google Classroom. Remember, it's, uh, it won't let you really post unless you title it. So I'm going to put our virtual classroom. Um, and I will let them know something. Check out our classroom. Okay. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to do a file. And it should come up as my recent files. Upload, browse, and then it was TPT. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, was it downloads? What did I save it under? <laughs> I totally forgot what I saved it under. Me. Well, I can put mine where the Trevor one is on here. Do you guys remember what uh, file I saved it under? I'll go back. Let me check. Okay, here it goes. Let me download it again. Bitmoji documents save. Google Classroom. Add. You're going to do file. Upload, you have to say upload because your recent is going to take you to um, your um, Google Drive. Okay, open. Okay, and then I'm going to say that the students could only view the file, right? They're not able to manipulate. I don't, and they don't all need to get it so when I, i'm going to click assign so on here when they open it right they can see and they should still be able to click any of the links right last dojo so they'll be able to click any of the links in uh, the virtual classroom but they won't be able to move them anywhere. Oh, uh, so there's a question. I'm sorry. If I'm doing the same subject multiple sections, would it be feasible to do more, uh, one per period 
and just put the links. Yeah, it's totally up to, to you. Um, you can actually create multiple um, Google uh, virtual classrooms. Let's, let's say you create um, a virtual classroom and you like the whole setup. All you would have to do is uh, make a copy of it and then just change whatever it is that you would need to change for the other section or subject. Um, but let's say you do like a specific setup. So let me show you what I'm. So if I'm here uh, in, let me go back to my slides. Let's say I wanted this one here, right? This virtual classroom, I like the setup. Um, and I, all I needed to do was change some of the words that I have uh, on there. So I would do file, make a copy, of the entire presentation, it's going to prompt me to rename it. So you can say section two, if that's a section, or you can say section two math, however you, you want to name that section. And then you click OK, and it's basically going to copy the new uh, virtual classroom, right? It's a new section. And then all you would have to go and do is change some of the things that you have there. So um, I think that answered that question. So there's a question about Google Voice. Okay. Um, what do you do to create the virtual uh, WebEx room? Uh, what do you mean about the virtual uh, WebEx room? Ms. Miller, can you, um, what, what do you mean in regards to that? You can uh, you can unmute yourself. Oh, okay. So I have a WebEx and I have a, like a room, like basically uh -huh. the same as the you know virtual room. So okay. could I be uh, would I be able to do the same that we do on Google Classroom with WebEx? No. So Google Classroom. Is uh, is one thing, and your WebEx is something else. Yeah, but I have seen actually like my supervisor has like the same presentation that you're showing us mm -hmm. when you actually join in the uh, the WebEx. It's like a a virtual room, and it, you know, and it is it looks similar to what you have right now in the slide. Um, I haven't. Uh, done that. I I don't know how to do that. Um, to be honest with you, because I've never. There's so many things that are limited with WebEx. Like I, I know that at the beginning, um, a lot of you asked me about the breakout rooms for WebEx, and I, I'm telling you, I mean, I have the slides ready to go, mm -hmm. but it's and I have tried it with my coworker. We, um, but she was never able to get on. Oh, I want to try it myself. Maybe, uh, maybe because I'm a speech therapist, I have other. Uh, right. Things, oh, so okay. as a, right. So as a teacher, um, myself, I don't have access to a lot of things on WebEx, and it okay. didn't allow me to do it. Okay. So maybe, yeah. Maybe. I have tried, mm -hmm. but but yeah. maybe if you uh, try something and then are uh, are willing to share with us, I would appreciate it. Like there's yes, things definitely. that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your great ideas you're giving us. Amazing. No no very, problem. very amazing. Everything. Thank you. Thank you. Google. Uh, I will know to click on your emoji to find your email address. All right. So uh, I would let um, people know in your Google Classroom or whenever you send out a letter um, to the parents or through a message on Class Dojo or remind however you um, decide to communicate with your parents, whenever you can let them know that whenever um, the children are logged on to your Google Classroom, that they can just click on your picture and it will get take you to their email, to your email. Um, so that you, you kind of have to let you know the parents know, especially like when you um, do a WebEx with um, the students, like to get to meet them. I would go over your virtual classroom and let them know 
this is, you know, if you click on me, you, you'll see my email. If you click on here, it's going to take you. So, like, you see how I'm doing um, sharing my screen. I would go over this with the students, especially with the younger ones that don't know how to read and the parents might not really understand. So, I think, like, really walking them through and showing them exactly what happens when they click on the things. Um, and you can also say, like, explore it because. If it's on your Google classroom as a PDF, they won't be able to move anything around. So you can let the students know, have fun exploring our virtual classroom, right? So, so following up on that question, huh? following up on that question. So if they click on the link, they only see your email address or can they click on that link and automatically send you an email? No, they have to click on the, when they click on the email address, their email uh, should be able to pop up so that they can generate an email. They would be able to generate. It wouldn't okay. send an email. Thank you. No problem. So Google Voice is a free application where you can download the app onto your phone and basically it will link, um, you will get a Google Voice number that you can share with parents. Um, the settings basically are where you can turn it on and off. You don't want to be disturbed at any time, um, you know, after certain school hours. And basically, um, it's a way of not communicating with parents without sharing your actual personal number. So it is linked to your number, but whenever you're, the, you're calling a parent, they will see your Google Voice number and not your um, actual personal phone number. And then the nice thing about it is that you can send them um, messages, you can send them images of things, um, you know, call, almost like having, using your phone, but not using your number. So I like, I used it a lot during, um, you know, from March to June, because I had to communicate with a lot of parents. And this way, you know, I was able to take images um, from my phone, send them, you know, because they would say, well, what do you mean they're not doing the work? And I would send them an image. So it's nice not to be able to use your number um, and kind of keep your personal life separate from work um, because we do need to communicate. Uh, the, because at the beginning, I was doing star six, seven to block my number every time I call the parent, but I, it becomes tedious if you're calling 20 parents in a given day. So this is like an easy way of getting around having to do this. Uh, okay, I think they answered. Um, yeah. And good morning, people, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Hi, Mrs. Pereira. How are you? I hope you don't mind this. What what what's it called in the school? It's an unannounced walkthrough. Yes. You're more than welcome. Is everyone learn? You can ask them. I'm, I'm seeing them. Like absolutely, he is doing an excellent job, and I had said it before. This is Mrs. Cleffy from Sussex Avenue, and I want to say I want to commend her because I really feel she's doing an excellent job. I can honestly say, which I said it to this whole class. I feel much better going in to September due to the wonderful teaching. She's a great patient teacher and we've learned so much and I cannot commend her enough. And that's Mrs. Cluster. Thank you. She's amazing from Southgate School here. Well, we're here at the NTU. School. We're happy to hear that. Jeez. Excellent, excellent, because we knew early on that the great majority of teachers are going to be teaching virtually. We have, we have a diverse uh, executive board. We have young members on our executive board. We have more veteran ones. We knew right there in March that we needed to start top of the virtual teaching thing, because if we waited for the state or the district to do it, it would never happen. So since most of you are going to be virtually teaching or distance teaching come September, trust us, they're going to be evaluating. And we're, no, we're not going to be able to use the excuse, well, you know, I just started. They're going to say, you know, you had March, April, May, 
July to get up speed and become you know, experts in, 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 in distance, uh, in distance education. So I, we can see that you're learning a lot. We can see that. And you know, these, these, these videos are available on the NTU website. So you can go back and review, or you can go back and refresh or refer it to another member and say, you know, if you guys didn't catch the Miss Pereira's workshops, you know, during the day, you can catch them on YouTube or you can catch them on the uh, NTU website. And thank you, NTU, the NTU, for having the foresight, because I really want to commend the NTU as well. So this is really helping us. And, and if you didn't do this, I, I honestly, this was giving me a tough time as far as this summer, looking at different things digitally. But I commend NTU. I like that NTU is putting it on their website. It gives access to other teachers to do this. So NTU and as yourself, I commend you for doing that. Thank you so much. I have another question too, because my concern was I've heard from many people, like from Josh Cohen, my principal, that they're planning to switch from Google Classroom to Schoolology to a different platform. And that concerns me, like I guess switching, like a major switch like that. Um, and I don't think any of us has trained maybe somebody at an old school or something. Um, but is there a way to see if we can work with the district in finding out these things ahead of time? Because this has been very helpful and feeling more comfortable. But it would be a shame that we're comfortable with this and then come, you know, September 1st, like, oh, by the way, no more Google Classroom. We're now doing Schoolology or whatever they decide to do. Yeah, Tiffany, at 2 o'clock today, we have a WebEx with the district's reopening committee. The Newark Teachers Union, we're on that reopening committee. So that's going to be today at 2 o'clock. So we're going to be asking that question among a couple of other questions, and we're going to be posting the answers tomorrow in our NTU weekly update. And also at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning um, on our uh, the NTU uh, Facebook, we're going to be going live and answering questions. But that's a good question. I just wrote it down. We're going to be asking the district about that today to make sure that, like you said, that we're not training for a certain um, um type of uh, program or applications and that they turn around in September and totally switch it up on us. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you guys die. Well, John, John, hi, this is Maria Tutela. She, you, whoever picked Ms. Pereira, Mrs. Pereira, kudos to them because she's so patient, so knowledgeable. She goes step by step. She goes above and beyond. She really is wonderful. You're welcome. We, you know, we, we did make the right choice. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Is any is anyone can start? Um, I may add that on uh, August the thirtieth. Is anyone can start coming together as teachers to know what we have to do earlier before the August first. Oh yeah, definitely before before September. Uh, actually, by the middle of August, um, we're gonna have a real good idea of what's gonna be happening. Okay. Just, you know, check your emails and you know don't, a lot of people are ignoring their board emails and you know they're, they're getting back to me saying you know john it's the summer i shouldn't have to be dealing with you know board of ed uh, emails over the summer well they're important because we want to know are you are you are you the type of person that you have um reasons that you're not going to be coming back in september or do you have diabetes type one type two do you have asthma do you have a parent at home um, there's a million things that a principal needs to know um so that they, she can prepare for september but if we're not getting back to them because we're ignoring the board emails because it's the summer well we're not helping ourselves and i so, really end up the roster list that we need to know as teachers, are we going to do it hybrid? Are we going to be in classrooms? And this is the reason why I want to prepare as much as I can with my other fellow teachers, trying to do the best we can. Are we going to do it in the classroom? If so, then when we'll have access to the classroom to prepare. And also, we may have to prepare at home. Uh, so knowing as That's much as we can ahead of time will really help us. That's right. Well, well, what we have going on first uh, right now at First Avenue, and at 13th Avenue, is this week, the teachers began teaching. Um, we have several teachers in both locations that are doing 50-50 split. They have uh, 10 kids in their classroom live, and they have 10 kids on WebEx. So theoretically, they're instructing 20 kids. But what we want to find out from the teacher is how that's going. We're not, we don't want to find out from the board. We don't want to find out from the kids or the parents. We want to find out from those teachers, how is it going juggling half live 
half WebEx? Is it is it really uh, an insurmountable amount of extra work? Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna find out. We're gonna inter interview those teachers in the middle of next week because, like I said, this was the first week doing 50-50. So we're getting a lot of information and we're getting it live. So we really got to thank those teachers at First Avenue and 13th Avenue for going in there. Although the great majority of us are not going to be going in. There's just no way we'll fit in these buildings under CDC guidelines. And that's why we, we organize these courses so that for, since most of us will be doing distance uh, teaching, distance education, uh, that we wanted to be up to speed on that. So thank you guys for watching. Um, it was a great unannounced walkthrough. You're doing a great job, Mrs. P. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get in contact with you guys later. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Hi. Thank you. Uh, real quick, sorry. Who who are thank these you. surveys coming from? Oh, he won. He left. He's still on. Who are these surveys coming from that we're looking for? Our the surveys are, are supposed to be are supposed to be the surveys are supposed to be coming from the district. If they're not coming from the district yet, we're going to find out at our two o'clock reopening committee meeting why they haven't been sent out yet and how soon can they get them out because the principals and the teachers need these answers ASAP. Okay, perfect. Thank okay, you. because I've not seen any. Thank you. Okay, so um, sorry about that, guys. Um, so uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about before um, we go, um, it was to be uh, about your header, right, for your um, Google Classroom. Um, as far as Schoology, I don't know anything in terms of I haven't switching over to that. It would be a shame if they do it to us without us really preparing. But like I said, um, I'm going to be around um throughout the year and if that's the case um we need to hop on a webex and we need to work through it together i will be here and we'll walk through it together like i'm not sure i'm familiar with psychology um but i think that if we work together and we put our brains together we'll figure it out um so you know i don't want us to forget about it um we really control things that we don't know about in the meantime, um, you know, use the tools that we have to face whatever it is that is going to come and we'll just work our way through it. So um, I think that if we really stick together, that it'll just make it a little bit easier for us. Uh, I, I hope they don't switch because I'm so familiar with Google yeah. Cloud that I would be upset if they switched it. Uh, um, Ms. Pereira, I just have a quick question. It's Maria Tutela. You're going to be doing a feedback at the end so we can write all lovely things about you, right? Okay. Okay. Because we want, we want to make sure that you get all the kudos that you deserve. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Sylvia, I just want to ask you if that last question is about the banner on top of the digital platform. Did you let me know about that? Yeah, I was going to do that right now. Great, thanks. Okay, so let's say that you have created a classroom. And um, so here's my digital uh, Bitmoji classroom. This is the one that I want to keep. So let me name this uh, virtual. Oops. Right, so I. This is my virtual classroom, but I want my header to look exactly like my virtual classroom. The first thing I need to do is make a copy of it, right? Because if I go and make changes on here, it's gonna make changes on this actual document. So I'm going to make a copy of the entire, I'm gonna put uh, virtual classroom. All right, so sorry, it, there's just so much feedback coming. Okay, so after I make a copy of it, right, it's now the same as my other one, but now I want to change the it into a header. The first thing I need to do, remember at the beginning of my slides, I said that you needed to change the page setup. So to do that, okay, 
I'm going to go here to file. Sorry, I need to move the picture. I'm going to go to page setup. Now, remember, um, Google Slides is always going to uh, have this as um, the standard page setup. So you're going to hit custom, right? And then I had said to change it to 1000. Let me change this first to pixels. And I'm going to make it 1000 by 250 and hit apply. It's going to move all of my things weird, right? It's going to change it into a weird format. So what I need to do is just make everything smaller. You know, just fit it. Oops, sorry. Just fit it into a space that makes this. Oh, goodness. Sorry. And just change the font to make it smaller. I wanted to, right? Make this go down and then change the pull. So you're going to have to play around with it, right? And change whatever it is that you need to change to make it smaller. If you want to keep the same, um, you know, thing as your. I can delete this if I wanted to, right? And then just move the pictures around. This is if you want to keep your uh, same picture. Okay. And then I need to bring my pencils there, my phone. And then I'm okay here if I want. I can make myself smaller. I can add more things on here if I wanted to. Okay, let me change this here. So it's a matter of uh, kind of playing with it to see what you can change. Right? So let's say you're okay with this. I want to change my, oops. I want to get my lamp back here. Okay. So I'm okay with it. You know, it looks just like my virtual classroom. So when you go to save it, this time instead, you're going to do, you're going to do file. Okay. And then you're going to download as a JPEG. As an image. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna let me open Okay, it's not gonna let me open the image on here. But so once you download it in your images, right? So when you go here to your virtual classroom or to your Google Classroom, you're going to uh, select here upload photo. And then you're going to select the photo from your computer and wherever it is that you have it. Um, virtual classroom header, I would open, it's going to download it and then you would just drag it. Are you guys able to see all of this? Okay. And then I would click select um, theme, right? I don't want to change the theme, so I'm not going to select it. But then I would click select the theme and it would change it to this one. And then that's how you would create your header. So you can create your header from your actual classroom as long as you first make a copy. So it's very important that you make a copy of before you make the changes in the page setup. So like um, if I wanted to change this one that I started, I could I would just go here again, right? Um, file, page setup, and then I'm gonna change it again to custom, to pixels, and I'm gonna do 1000 by 250 and click apply. And then it's going to, you know, move it 
make things bigger. And then you have a little bit more room, right? And then you can add stuff. So let's say you wanted to create your own header from here. Okay, I'm gonna delete everything. Here's my header. I can pick a background. Uh, I can do a color, right? And I can do that, right? I can create a bed if I wanted to. I'm gonna upload from the web and I want to pick, sorry. So this is if you don't want to have the same image. Upload from the web and I want to do wall and floor background, classroom. I don't like those. So, okay. And let's see what else they have. So they have a lot of them. So maybe you want this one, right? And then you just have to it so that it opens. Sylvia. Yes. May you please um animate the emoji to see how if it works. Uh, you are the the emoji. Well, on you wouldn't do it for your header because the on the header it wouldn't really um it's not gonna be movable, but maybe let's this one here. Uh, you can put an animated GIF on the header, like it worked for me. That's what I did for oh, my class. Oh, okay. So let's see. How did you change it on here? Because I've never done it. So you want Add animation, is that what it is? Or no? I use a different program to create an animated um, GIF, because, but you can do that. Uh, because I, I've seen it where uh, there are ways for you to actually have um, your Bitmoji do different things throughout the slides, but you have to put various slides together. So I have seen that, um, but would you be able to um, share your screen of what yours looks like, if you don't mind, so that we can get an idea? Because how would it look on here? See, it doesn't, it didn't do it. It didn't do it on here. Let's see. And then it would just it, it fade it in. Okay. So I see yours moving, but what program did you use? Is that like a, a GIF or something or no? Yeah, I, I oh, was, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was on mute. <laughs> yeah, I, we didn't hear anything that you said. Oh, oh, okay. So <laughs> I, I, use, I use Khan Academy, the uh -huh. drone in animation um, program, because that's what the class was about. Okay. The, um, like, I coded that to move that way, but I used Screencastify, uh, and I okay. recorded a video of what I created. And Screencastify allows you to save any video as an animated GIF. So I guess if you made it work, somewhere on Google Slides, you can always record a video of it with Screencastify. And mm -hmm. then from there, you can upload it, you know, to so your I header. Know there's, I, I know there's a way to add um, animation, like the GIFs onto um, 
you know, any uh, presentation, there's actually um, a Google Chrome extension. Um, I have to look into it, but um, once I do, I mean, I'll look it up and then I'll share it with you guys. Because I know that there's a way to add them so that, but I don't know if we could do it with our Bitmoji. So I have um, looked it up on, you know, I follow a couple of teachers on, um, you know, Instagram and they show you how to get your Bitmoji to move across your actual classroom. Um, but they literally have to put like a bunch of slides together and it does take a lot of time to do it. But you don't really need to do all of that to put up your virtual classroom. Um, I mean, that's like going, you know, the extra, extra, extra mile. I mean, I know that it's a lot of work to really um, put your Bitmoji like moving and doing different things. Um, so, and it's, it takes a lot of time to do it. I know that. Um, so Yolanda said, will we see the digital classroom on the ban on the banner on the top of the page or will we see this separately on another page? Uh, is this for your Google Classroom? Uh, I'm sorry, hold on one No problem. Um, so I think that's what she was asking. Okay. Um, okay. But other than that, um, I mean, that's as much as I have as far as uh, the digital classroom and creating your header. It's basically about really just exploring what there is uh, in terms of, you know, the virtual world and how much you want to put into the virtual um classroom but like i said like when i created uh mine it literally you know it was not something you know very complicated it was very you know simple um and you know at the end of the day it's just really to have something near outside of you know what we already have and to give the students somewhere to go um, Sylvia, yes. thanks, thanks so much. I'm sorry. Just a little crazy dog barking at that point. So I don't want to make all that noise in the middle of a, of a training. No, thank you so much uh, as far as the banner. But my uh -huh. question is, that's for a digital, now for your digital class, when your kids log on, do they see that banner? And, uh, and then you have a separate sheet where they can actually click onto those different links. Um, that's what I want to know what you have. So the banner, um, they won't be able to click on. They, they'll just be able to see. Um, they'll be able to click on the post that you make for your actual virtual classroom. So um, remember when I showed you um, and when I shared how I posted it onto the Google Classroom? So here's the Google Classroom. They can't really click on here, right? They won't be able to click. Um, but here, when they click on the classwork and they click on our virtual classroom, they can click on anything here. But they would. So that, that clarifies it for me. So we could use a digital banner, you know, we put up there, but then we'll just have a, a, a separate little page like you have. That's what I needed to see. Let me go back. If you close that, just go back to let me just see how. You uh, to the first page. No, just where you were just now okay. before. So in order to post, so you would go to classwork and then right. I just clicked create and then um, I created an assignment right. and then I posted it. So when I posted it as a PDF, I it gave you the option what I wanted uh, the kids to be view, and I said the kids uh, can view it. It's a PDF. So that, let me ask you, so your virtual classroom, you have it specifically under a topic where it says virtual classroom and you hold on to that all the time so that way you yes. can use it over right. and over again. Okay, right. that's what I needed to clarify in my head, you know, as far as how you had it set up. So that answers my question as far as that's concerned. The little round circle, um, you talked about the large banner and then the little round circle is something, again, see where it says distant learning, select theme on the right, upload photo? Right. right. Yeah. 
But usually I know you have your picture there. Now, no. if, if we choose to do that, it's going back into settings to do that? No. So if you upload photo, that means you've created a banner, right? Yourself, you created the banner and you want to upload it. So uh -huh. let's theme, you are selecting a theme that is already pre-made. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you, uh, if you select a theme, then a, you're using the themes that are there. Right. Uh, provided by uh, Google. If you I'm, want, go ahead. I just noticed that they have like a little circle, like they have the banner, but then they have that little circle right there where they put something else. You have your banner across, but then they have that round circle there. What, this here? Where it says select, no, that's all the way up on the top, but I've seen it where they've had um, a little circle embedded in that banner right there on the right side where it says select theme and photo, like in that little circle. I was just wondering if that's something that you have done as well. No, I mean, I haven't seen it. So this is how the majority of my, um, you know, uh, Google Classrooms are. Like if you see, this is another banner that I created for this class. And I just use random, uh, you know, pictures. Um, right. It looks exactly the same. So, um, okay. So you clarified a couple of things for me. So now in my head, if we're going to be, you know, if I'm going to, I'll be using and doing a digital classroom, then as I put the topic on where it says digital classroom, if I have separate classrooms, I could always, or like separate subjects that if I want to get that detail, I could put underneath there. I see what you're saying as far as creating the page. Thank you for that clarification. Thanks. No problem. So, I have a question too yeah. about, I guess, Sharon, because you share your virtual classroom as an assignment. Like, would you be able to put it under your title? Like, I saw your other classes, you had information like right under your title. Could you put a link there as well, or no? When you edit, uh, you can put the link in there. Um, so it's in the like when you click that button, and uh, you have the description on here, right? Mm -hmm. You can generate the link, um, I'm wondering if it allows you to put a link on here. So let's see, uh, let me get a virt my virtual classroom. We'll try it, I've never tried it, so we'll try it now. Okay, so I'm gonna click on here, it's my virtual classroom. Uh, but this is like the slides. I wanted the PDF, right? So let me try it with the Google Slides. And if I put this and let me save it, let's see what happens. See, nothing will happen. It doesn't let you do it. It won't let you do it. So you have the class code. Uh, this is the stream. Um, it, you can generate a Google Meet if we had, if they let us use a Google Meets, but because they don't let us use Google Meets, we can't. So your header, it's limited on what you can do. So all of the teachers that I have um, like researched and follow, whenever they post their virtual um, classroom, they post it as an assignment in their Google Classroom. Okay. You may have already shared this, but is there a way to make something stay at the top, like to lock it there? Uh, what do you mean stay at the top? Well, the stream, it updates, like, right, every time I put a new post, it's going to move it down. Is there a way to, like, make to something make to stay up, up there? No, just yeah. stay up. Can I pin yes. it? No, you would have to come here and then, you know, click move to the top. It doesn't let... There's nothing, you know, because the stream is something for it to consistently, you know, for things to come in. Um, let's see. Uh, Patricia, what do you mean as far as are we supposed to set uh, the two? You can unmute yourself. I'm talking about both the Google Classroom and the Visual Classroom. Are we supposed to set both? Um, 
you don't have to do you don't you don't even have to do the virtual classroom. Um, that is an option if you want to add stuff on there. So let's say, especially if you're doing like kindergarten or first grade, you can put um, you know images of books on there and then link uh, the audio or the you know onto the book that so the children can actually just click the book and listen to um, the. Option, so you don't need um, to create your own header. These are just options. You can just pick the headers that are given to you by um, Google. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, and then the other Thank thing you. that no problem. The other thing that I wanted to share with you. So I just need to, um, and I think it's going to be something that is very nice for me to share with you. So I'm going to actually be sharing this with you. I hope you can see it. So um, because we most likely will be virtual, um, I have, I follow a teacher who on um, Instagram who actually shared this so that we can share with other teachers. And she created this uh, presentation, this slide where, you know, we would add our image uh, here and um, we would, it's kind of like get to know your teacher. So um, she actually animates hers. Um, she took a picture of herself and she actually is animated. So I just have to learn how to do that. I have to, I haven't had a chance to watch the video on how to do that. And as soon as I watch it, um, hopefully by uh, Tuesday, I should have uh, learn how to do it. So I'm going to work on it this weekend, but I wanted to share this with you and then I'll, uh, you'll be able to make a copy once I post it onto the Google Classroom. And then basically, you know, the kids can just click on the link and it would take them to that page, right? Um, they would go to the slide and basically they'll get to meet you as the teacher and you can share a lot of the things that you like. You can do to truths and a lie, and they would have to try to guess which one is true and which one's a lie. Um, you can add or delete any of these slides. You can um, also then like add pictures to show some of your favorite things, books that you love. So, um, and then you would have your contact information. So I think this would be something great uh, for you to do um, with your students for them to get to know you and meet you and know a little bit about you. Uh, since we might not be able to physically see them in person. So I wanted to give you this option, I, but I really um, also want to learn how to really animate ourselves to put um, ourselves into the actual slides. I think it would be cool. Um, so I just wanted to let you know about that as well. And then basically, if you click, you know, this little house, it would take them back to the home page. So I'll share this with you sometime uh, next week. But I just wanted to uh, basically show you now. But other than that, I know um, I gave you a lot of information as far as um, the virtual classroom and all of that other uh, stuff. Um, all the work of recreating a whole new um, classroom. It's really about like just playing around with. Uh, the virtual classroom and seeing what you can do, like, just have fun with it. But if you have questions along the way, just, you know, reach out. But that's it guys. Any other questions before you um, head out? Sylvia, this is Holly Wojcikowski. Just really a general question. I see the videos that you've posted on the Google classroom, but I was just wondering, if it seems for one of them you posted the slides you, your slides separately are you doing that for all of them because there are some portions that i know i want to go back to a particular place without having to go through the whole video yes yeah, so um all the slides and the video are there you okay. can access both yeah okay. so if you don't want to see the video and want to see the slides you can just go directly to the slides without even watching the video Okay, so because I only saw the video posted. So it should be on there. So yes. um, I'll sh I'll share my screen so I can show you where it is. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. So if you are 
in your uh, Google, the Google Classroom, when you go on the Google Classroom, uh, you're not going to see anything that is posted in the stream, like the stream as far as old assignments. You would have to go through everything, but the easiest way would be to click on classwork, right? And if you go here on classwork, you can see, you know, um, virtual classroom, edit puzzle. You have the video, and then you have the training slides, video, training slides, and then I put, did a lot with Google Slides. So um, how to uh, I did Google Slides for beginners, a training video. Uh, here's another video. These are the themes uh, and then the training slides, right? So there's always slides that go with every uh, under each, you know, topic. So there's always um, the slides to present. That's where you would find everything. Does that Uh, yes, it does. Thank you very much. No problem. So, Sylvia, what do you think we're going to have next week for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? What's your tentative thoughts? So, um, my thoughts are we're going to do um, definitely Pear Deck, uh, Flipgrid, and uh, Boom Learning. And then um, I also... I also want to do Nearpod because um, Nearpod is actually one of the programs that um, Newark has added mm -hmm. onto our Google Slides, and there's a lot of great features with Nearpod. So um, once um, you know we get together for the workshops, I'll be going over Nearpod and Pear Deck because Pear Deck does allow you to make your uh, slides interactive so that students can have more interaction. Uh, throughout the lesson. We have Mr. Leon. Welcome. How are you? Hey, how's everybody doing? Y'all look good. Oh, great. Great. Excellent. I just want to come in to, you know, thank you, uh, let you know how I am. Um, one of the things that I said yesterday um, was that you know, I personally thought that what was occurring uh, was only going to occur for a limited amount of time uh, back in March. And when I realized that it was going to be a longer haul, um, you know, forget about that I was praying because I was praying. But, you know, uh, sometimes, um, when I uh, applied in my interview to be principal a long time ago, um, somebody had asked that I like taking risks. And I actually clarified it for them. I said, I like taking calculated risks. I want to win. and. In the process, one of the things that is very, very reassuring to me is that you guys exist. The reason why we're doing so well is because of how all of the teachers adjusted. You had to adjust. No one, even if, even if somebody knew how to do what all of you have learned to do and are continuing to learn to do. Um, there had to have been an adjustment on everyone's part. And so kids are well off because of my incredible teaching staff. So I'm just on to just thank you, to applaud you for what you've done, to let you know that we will continue to assist and support you. And that um, as we model flexibility a lot during the last uh, <laughs> five months, that I ask you to understand that we're gonna need you to have patience with us. Taste. So things may change sometimes from day to day. And then all I'm gonna need you is just know that it's gonna be a normal, that we will try to get things right and that we will need to be making uh, appropriate changes along the way with the first priority being your health uh, and safety and that of our students. So um, continue with your uh, awesome session today. Um, 
and the days to come. Um, take care of yourselves. Um, uh, hug your families, um, especially if you're allowed to, right? Now, if you don't want to, that's a whole other thing. But if, if you actually can, like, hug them as, as you have them near you. Um, this continues to be a very vicious virus. As you've probably heard me already say, it, um, you don't see it coming. And when it arrives, it doesn't allow you to have the ones you love to be around you. So um, we have been doing well. Um, we have in-person operations at the uh, central office now. So uh, everyone was required to test two weeks prior to their start. And that's what's gonna probably happen for anyone who, uh, well, for everyone um, in the district, two weeks prior to your start on September 1, I'm gonna want everyone to, um, to be tested. JRMC.US, Jewish Renaissance Medical Center. Uh, they have a registration for all Newark employees um, the testing is every Friday from 12, from 8 in the morning to noon. And it's free to district employees and to any of your relatives that are 19 years old and older. So um, please, uh, you know, take advantage of that. Stay safe. Uh, know that I'm thinking about all of you. Give you my prayers. Uh, Superintendent Leon, yes, this is this is Maria Chitala. How are you? No, I love you. I know. Uh, you put my you, sister on here. Uh, you, my sister. Just let me know. Uh, you picked a wonderful person. Miss um Pereira is doing Mrs. Pereira is doing a wonderful job. I've learned so much and she's so patient, so knowledgeable. Um this is just gold. I just have a question about the testing. If Wait, I bet, uh, I'm sorry. I hear my friends, and then I saw Olga. I saw Murphy Brown, Murphy Butler. Murphy okay, Butler. Yeah, yes, Mr. Leon, I'm on. Yeah, Murphy Butler is my girlfriend, but I can't discuss that with all of you. Just letting you know, I have lots of love on this call. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Tutela. Two weeks prior, like I can't get tested now, right? Uh, I would say you should get tested if you haven't been tested, but what we're gonna require is two weeks before you start during that window. So if you haven't done it yet and you can wait that time period, do so. If you have concerns, you should go get tested as soon as you know you shouldn't wait. If you go get tested now, you're going to be needing to get tested again. Just know that. Go off mute. Uh, get back on mute because I couldn't hear you. Get off. Sorry about that. Um, but it takes a while to get the results, right? So I'm trying to figure out my time frame. So the thing is, that's a big problem. Okay. Right now, it's taking about, in some instances, a week to get the results. So we think if you if you're going to do it two weeks before September one. Don't wait for the week right before September 1, because you might not be able to get your results. Okay. So August 17 is the window of time where you should probably start. I would say try to get it done that week so that you can make sure your results are in. Okay. So Mr. Leon, this is Nancy Gianni. Can um, we get tested with our doctor? Oh my goodness. This is a meeting of all my people. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Go again, Nancy. So can we get tested by our own doctor? Yes, you don't have to go to anything. In, in Newark, um, ARMC is doing it free. Just for staff. Um, uh, we have free sites all throughout Newark for Newark residents. But if you're an employee, you can also go to those sites in Newark. But definitely, you want to go to the doctor more closer to your house, anywhere else, more power to you. Uh, go do, go to any of those sites. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, honey. Thank, thank you. Great job last night on the Alliance call. Thank you. Great job. Have a great, great weekend.
Bye. 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 I'll see everyone Tuesday. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you.